Every organization wants IT security, especially in their Microsoft 365 environment. That's even more important when they start looking at AI and implementing AI within their IT organization. Here are a few features you definitely want to be looking into if you're trying to secure SharePoint for use with Copilot. And these features come right out of the box. Let's get into it. First, let's just set the stage for this conversation. Your organization has Copilot. Maybe they're just looking into Copilot. I've talked to a lot of customers who already rolled out Copilot and then started asking questions about security. That's kind of a big no-no. Uh, you're doing things backwards. You got to get everything right first, and then you can safely deploy Copilot. But there's something you, you definitely should know about Copilot that a lot of customers don't that I talk to. And that's that Copilot is designed to be secure right out of the box. If a user doesn't have access to a file normally, Copilot's not going to give them access. That's that's a misconception I've heard from a lot of other customers uh, that they think that AI is going to expose data that's not supposed to be exposed. It's going to give ac extra access. It's going to elevate access. It's going to, because they hear things like Copilot has access to all of your data. And that's true. But Again, let me reiterate that. If a user doesn't have access to a file, Copilot won't give them that access. In fact, Copilot won't even acknowledge that the file exists versus if another user goes and talks to it, they do have access to a particular file. Copilot's more than happy to return that information because Copilot does know what you have access to. But here's where it gets real interesting. So suppose there's a file that got shared with everyone in the organization. Let's say that that's a payroll type file and it has everyone's salaries. In the past, you would have to know where that file existed or you would have to know some keywords about that file to be able to search in the, the Microsoft search bar. If you didn't know where that file was and you couldn't find it, then it was secure, right? No one knew about it. It was security through obscurity. That was what people called it back then. AI changed all of that because we're not dealing with a keyword-based search tool anymore. We're not dealing with something where you could hide a file just by not announcing where that file was. And if it happens to be overshared, as we call it, it was shared with way too many people than it should have been, then there's not a high chance uh, that, that it, something can go wrong, that it would land in the wrong hands. Copilot changed all that. AI in general has changed all that because when, it's not a keyword search anymore. If you know what the content is supposed to be about, if you know some similar words, if you understand what the point, if, you're, if you just type in payroll document, it could return the payroll file, the, the spreadsheet or whatever that happens to be, even though the word payroll may not be in there. You don't have to get the keywords exactly right anymore. You can have a similar word, a, something that is semantically equivalent to whatever that content happens to be. Because Copilot will know about all the files in the organization, at least the ones in M365. And it'll know, it'll have at least a very good uh, feeling for what that content represents. And if you ask Copilot, about you know a particular piece of content, it's extremely good at finding it. So security through obscurity doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it was never a good idea to begin with. I think we can all agree on that. It was never a good, it was never a substitution for proper information security. But Copilot kicked that door wide open. If you have access to a file, it's going to help you find that file. It doesn't matter where it's at. If you have access to it, Copilot's going to find it for you, and it'll even return the information right there in the chat. And oversharing is probably the number one issue I've seen in organizations, overshared data. Let's jump into the SharePoint Admin Center and let's start talking about some of the ways that you can deal with this. Now, I'm in the Admin Center. The, the first thing you do want to know is if you have at least one Copilot license, this advanced management right here is going to be lit up for you. You see a green bar across the top saying that you have access to this. This is SharePoint Advanced Management. Now, this is only showing some of the tools available for SharePoint Advanced Management. But all these tools will be free if you've got at least one license. It doesn't matter if that's just to an admin. And you don't even have to have the license assigned to you. If there's just one license in your environment for Copilot, you have this. 
So there's a lot of options here to help manage things. But the first one I think you should know about, and this is going to have the greatest impact immediately, is called RAC, Restricted Access Control. Now, here's the scenario that RAC is designed to fix. Let's suppose you've got an accounting department. There's a lot of files there, and they've been shared with who knows who. There's probably a whole lot of shared with the organization or shared with everyone except external users. There's a lot of overly shared files, and it's going to take a long time to clean this mess up, but you just need to clamp down the access now. That's what Rack is designed to do. Here's how. If we go into Sites and active sites. I could click on any one of these sites, well, not the app catalog, click on any one of these sites, and under settings, you'll see restricted site access. Now, this is how you're going to enable this, and it's done on a per site basis. If I click edit, I can type in the name of a, a, a security group, or an M365 group, and it doesn't matter who has shared files on there, it doesn't matter who they've been shared with, this will override everything so that you have to be inside this group in addition to whatever other sharing requirements or sharing links were created on that site. So this overrules everything so that it, and if I type in Contoso Sales right here and click Save, then it doesn't matter who had access before. If they're not a member of Contoso Sales, they no longer have access to anything. It is a stopgap measure that is really effective at a lot, buying you some time to start going through all of the sharing links. There's some reports in here that'll show you sharing links as well. And it'll, it buys you that time to go through, review all of the, all, all the shares that were created so that you can clamp down security with with more time, more lead time. But it does give you that immediate security right now. And this is good, not just for Copilot, but just SharePoint security in general. Sharing's always been incredibly easy in SharePoint. And it some people say it's been a little too easy. And that is why every single organization has a problem with overshared data. That becomes a critical issue when you start talking about Copilot. So this is one of the things you want to tackle way before you ever actually start to leverage Copilot in your organization. Now let's talk about another feature that may sound similar, but it works in a very, very different way. But first, one thing to note is all of these features are designed to improve your security in general, but especially when it comes to Copilot. But first, all these features are designed to secure your data, or better secure your data at the very least. You can pick and choose from all these different solutions to match what your, what your situation calls for. There's another thing that you can do when it comes to protection, and that's backing up your data. And that leads us into this video's sponsor. Today, many organizations rely on Microsoft 365 for everything from email, collaboration, conferencing, and calendars, to documents, internal communications. Yet this critical data can be lost as easily as it's created. Threats like cyber attacks, retention gaps, or even a simple delete click can leave data inaccessible and cause costly downtime. Nakivo backup and replication seamlessly bridges this gap to ensure your Microsoft 365 data and Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Microsoft Teams is backed up and easily recoverable. You can send Microsoft 365 backups and backup copies anywhere, local folders, cloud platforms, NFS and SMB shares, tape media, and duplication appliances. The solution offers advanced ransomware protection features that include backup encryption and immutability. Microsoft 365 data loss does not need to happen. With Nakivo backup and replication, you can ensure maximum protection of Microsoft 365 data. Make sure to check out Nakivo in the link in the description below for a free 15-day trial. Now, the next feature is called Restricted Content Discovery. It sounds a little similar. Like I said, it sounds a little similar to RAC, to Restricted Access Control. But RCD, Restricted Content Discovery, works in a different way. What this does is it, is, it essentially better hides content from Copilot. So in the scenario where you have a site that a lot of people have access to, uh, whether they know it or not, then you could apply RCD so that Copilot 
will essentially f see that site is invisible. It won't see the content on there unless a user has discovered it. R again, restricted content discovery. So it's restricting your ability to talk to Copilot and discover content that you haven't discovered on your own. That, that sounds a little sounds a little confusing. Here's what it essentially means. If I go into a site and I go into a, a document library, open some files up, those files are now discoverable if I go talk to Copilot. I can pull up Teams. I can talk about you know particular files, and it's going to know that. I think behind the scenes what's happening is it's – since I've opened those files up, they're in my recent files listing. So they're actually the, – the references to those files are under my account. So Copilot doesn't have to see that site because it sees that the content ha uh, has been opened by me. And so now it knows it can return that information. So because I discovered that content, I opened it up, I edited it, whatever, maybe I just read it, Copilot knows where that content now is. Now, RCD is put on a site-by-site -site basis, and typically it's for just much higher security scenarios. It, it still doesn't take the place of proper information security with SharePoint, proper access control at the site level, at the document level. If you need to, I guess at the file level. I still hate that idea. And it doesn't take the place of something like Microsoft Purview, where you would apply labels uh, to it to restrict who has access to those files. You could even encrypt those files, and only people within a certain uh, security group could have that, could even open those files up. It doesn't. RCD doesn't, doesn't take the place of that. It, it's somewhere in kind of a, a gray area in the middle, I think. But it is a very, very unique opportunity to clamp down on who can find content on particular sites. Maybe, maybe it's to buy you some time, but while you're investigating Purview, while you're starting to set up those labels, that, that the information protection to better secure it. So it could be, again, like, like Rack, could be kind of a stopgap while you're getting the proper security in place. Just bear in mind that with RCD, it's going to affect all users. If you apply RCD, in fact, let's go into the SharePoint and let's show, let's see where that's even applied at. So if I go back into Content Center and I go to Settings, now this used to be a PowerShell setting. It used to have to do this through PowerShell with, I think it was uh, the SharePoint Online Management uh, shell. And now you will see right here, Restrict Content from Microsoft 365 Copilot. And a little info bubble here just to give you some more information along with a link. But if you turn this on, I, I think within a few minutes uh, of time, Copilot will no longer see that this site exists unless, as I mentioned, unless you've already gone in there and opened up something. So it will make content harder to find through Copilot for people who should have access and people that shouldn't have access. Take that with a grain of salt. Your mileage may vary on your experience with RCD, but it is there and it is an important thing to know about, especially since it's now here in the SharePoint Admin Center. And if you've gotten value out of this video so far, then hit that like button and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date on all of this cool SharePoint stuff that's coming out. I'm, I'm doing a lot of coverage of SharePoint and Copilot related things, especially agents. So stay up to date on all that and hit that subscribe button. Now, the other feature I want to show you is it's a much newer feature. And this is really good for when you do have that protection on sites. Suppose you've already got your data labeled on a particular SharePoint site. Maybe it's a contracts site. That's a good example. So legal contracts stored in SharePoint. And you may have other types of content like that. You may have other contracts somewhere else, but you don't know where. You could do a site policy comparison. And let's jump into the SharePoint and talk about where this one is. So under the reports section, you'll see site policy comparison. And what this does is you'll give it an example site, like the legal contracts site. 
And then it, what it'll do is it will look for up to, I think, 10,000 different sites. It'll scan all the all of your other sites to find content that ha- is similar to what that legal contracts site has, but may not have the same protections on there. So you'll select those reference sites, the ones that are set up correctly, and you want to be a model for other sites. Then you'll set the scope. So let's walk through this. Uh, let me select Contoso Sales and then click Next. Then we can select up to 10,000 SharePoint sites to compare against this reference. Now, we can choose things like we can just say select all site types. You could use classic communication. You have some filters here for what which sites you want to compare or for which sites you want to select for this comparison. Once you've done that, just give it a name. Uh, how about uh, sales contracts? And then we'll click finish. And then this report will run. It will take at least a few hours. It looks like it'll take up to 48 hours. But this will give you other sites that have similar content to your reference site. And then it will highlight what the differences are in the policies you've got set on those sites. So settings for sharing control, rack, I'm sure is probably going to be listed in there as well. Differences like that where you may want to apply the same policies and the same settings to all of those different sites that were similar to that sales co- contracts site. So those are three different ways that you can start to clamp down on security within SharePoint and better prepare you for Copilot or better secure you once you've already deployed Copilot and didn't take these steps into consideration. There's a lot of settings here. There's more that continue to come out and I'm going to do my best to cover all of them. To stay up to date, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and to see other features that have come out recently, just click or tap the screen for my SharePoint playlist, and I'll see you over there.